John Lilyufia said, it is the disposition of the thought that alter the nature of the thing. The disposition of the thought that altereth the nature of the thing. It's how we think. When I was 40 years old, I was on an airplane, and I was sitting next to a guy, and, and, and I asked him, you know, you make small talk with people. I said, so what do you do? And he said, I build spacecrafts. And I'm thinking, do, 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 do. You know, you know what you're thinking when this happens? I mean, I'm thinking, the, you know, sure you build spacecrafts. And he said, no, and he gave me his business card, and he has 3,500 employees reporting to him. And he legitimately built spaceships. And as we were sitting there talking, I, I said, what's your biggest challenge in, in your profession? He said, I can't get my engineers to think big. I can't get them to think bigger than they think. And I asked him what he meant, and he said, well, think about it. He goes, you know, we thought if you were to attempt to try to travel faster than the speed of sound, you would explode. Your body would explode. And it didn't. Physics said it would, but it didn't. He said, if we can travel faster than the speed of sound, why can't we travel faster than the speed of thought? And I laughed. And he said, that's the problem. <laughs> and I'm a guy that's always telling people you can do anything. And I caught myself and basically said, shame on me for laughing at something that's thinking bigger. Thinking bigger. He asked me what I did, and I talked about building teams of people. And he said this, he said, my, my challenge is to, is, is to challenge my engineers to defy the laws of physics. That's his job, to challenge his engineers to defy the laws of physics. And I sat there and I started thinking, think about us. We don't have to defy anything, nothing. Our task is much simpler than that. All we have to do is embrace the laws of success. And, and if you do some research, Sun Tzu was a, was a Chinese philosopher, and then he became a general. And he wrote a book 2,500 years ago called The Art of War. And I, and I guess I would say if you want to win in your life, if you want to win, you've got to understand these principles of success that, that are historic. You don't have to defy anything. You embrace them. They were written down 2,500 years ago on bamboo tablets. Sun Tzu said, now in order to kill the enemy, our men must be roused to anger. For them to perceive the advantage of defeating the enemy, they must also have their rewards. Thus, when you capture spoils from the enemy, they must also be used as rewards so that all your men may have, may have a keen desire to fight each on his own account. George Washington wrote, when men are irritated and the passions inflamed, they fly hastily to arms. But after the first emotions are over, to expect among such people that compose the bulk of an army that they are influenced by any other principle than those of interest is to look for what never did and I fear and never will happen. Whether it's George Washington or Sun Tzu 2,500 years ago, it's simple. It's why do you do it? Because you can get excited in a meeting. Listen, I know, I, I don't want, I'm tired too. <laughs> but I don't want this to end. I really don't want this to end. I want to be with you. I love, I want, I love the warmth that comes with being with leaders. I love the warmth and the, and the, and the comfort and the knowledge that know when you're with leaders. But Sun Tzu talked about it. You can, George Washington wrote about it. Get, get people excited. It doesn't last. But it's not about excitement. It's about commitment. And commitment comes when you know why. Andy Andrews, everybody you've heard has talked about why. Why do you do something? Why do you do something? You know, have you ever heard that statement? I wrote a book called Living to Win, and there's a statement. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. That's just not true. It does matter how you play the game. Of course, if you, if you cheat, it's not called winning anyway. It's called cheating. So it has nothing to do with winning and losing. It has everything to do with cheating. But folks, I'm going to tell you, it matters whether you win. Winning matters. Statistically, it matters. More divorces happen when people don't win. People get sicker when they don't win. If you just follow this, winning does make a difference. If you were going into surgery and there was a 50-50 chance of it being successful, and your family gathered and they made the calls to the relatives, your kids and the distant relatives, and they all showed up because there's a 50-50 chance of this being successful. 
the last thing you want at that moment, if you're 29 or 39 or 49 or 69 years old, the last thing you want is the, is the doctor coming into your office and saying, you know, it's, it doesn't matter. I'll do my best. But, you know, it is 50-50. You want a surgeon with some swagger. <laughs> you want a surgeon with some confidence. You want a surgeon that's willing to look at you and say, we're going to win. You can count on me. Winning does matter. When I was in my plane crash, December 14th, 1996, thank God I had a pilot that wanted to get home. Thank God I had a pilot that wanted to win. It does make a difference. Sun Tzu also said, the general who wins battles makes many calculations in his temple before the battle is even fought. The general who loses battles makes but few calculations beforehand. Why do you think we have events? Why do you think we have conference calls? Why do you think your, your mentors ask you to come to their home for trainings? Why, 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 do, why do you think that when there's information to get, we all go get it because we're making calculations before the battles? And look, I'm not naive. I know technically we're not talking about war. I get that. But my goodness gracious, you're fighting every day of your life to do better. There's still a fight. You're still facing something. You're facing those opportunities to, to improve. Why do you think we say share the mission 15 times a month? Share the mission 15 times a month. Just keep looking forward. Keep looking forward. You have to. You, nothing happens by accident. Success is on purpose. 2,500 years ago on bamboo tablets, it was about the general that wins many battles, makes many calculations. You plan for these things. You do these things on purpose. Sun Tzu also wrote, the general who advances without coveting fame and retreats without fearing disgrace, whose only thought is to protect his country and do good service to his sovereign, is the jewel of the kingdom. Stay humble. You know, just stay humble. I've told you the story about my dad. My first month, forget how much it was, but it was a lot for a 35-year-old kid. And my dad called me up and said, I'm proud of you. That's awesome. But let me give you some advice. Thinking he was going to give me financial advice for this great month I had in my life. And he said, the more money you make, the more people will tell you how great you are. Jimbo, you're not that good. <laughs> and then he said, the more money you make, the more people will criticize you. And you're not that bad either. If you remember who you are and where you come from and be kind to people. Everything, everything works out. You know, the, the reality about what we do is we edify each other. We tell each other how great we are. You're awesome. No, you're awesome. No, you're awesome. We tell each other how great we are. I'd rather be around a group like that than tearing each other down. Amen. Right? But here's the truth. Appreciate it. Value it. And let it go. <laughs> Seriously. It's dangerous. Because the truth is, none of us are that good. None of us, but we're great together. You can't defeat an army of people convicted knowing where they're going in their life. We're great together. Sun Tzu talked about, Sun Tzu talked about negativity. Odd. 2,500 years ago on bamboo tablets, Sun Tzu wrote, vacillation and fussiness are the surest means of sapping the confidence of an army. Oh, have you ever had anybody in your, you ever had anybody in your group or in your upline that saw the sky's always falling, it's never going to work? Oh, you, you ever had anybody like that? You don't have to acknowledge it because they may be looking at you. But if you've ever had anybody like that, I'm telling you right now, vacillation and fussiness, being negative, that doesn't mean being concerned. That doesn't mean having genuine, sincere challenges and problems you want to talk to somebody about. That just means complaining all the time about nothing. Complaining for the sake of complaining. There are people in the world that complain for the sake of complaining. And when you say, well, change it. Do whatever you want to do. They say, no, I'd rather complain. But it's the surest way to stop an army in its tracks. Const if you've got something you want to share, go to your mentor and share it. Don't go to your team and share it. Go to your mentor, find someone of, of, that has been on this walk before you and share this stuff with them. They will listen to you. 
Sun Tzu talked about five principles to be observed by an invading force. Number one, the farther you penetrate into a country, the greater will be the solidarity of your troops. Penetrating deeply brings cohesion. Penetrating only partway brings dispersion. The tighter you get, the more you work, the more you bring your people together, the more you teach people how to drive depth, the further you penetrate into an army. When you bring these people with you as you go, the tighter your team gets, the stronger your bonds with people, the more successful they are, the more storms they weather, the more battles they're willing to fight. Sun Tzu wrote, make forays in fertile country in order to supply your army with food. You know, here it is. Lead your troops to a place where they can pay for their car, where they can pay for their credit card, where they can make their rent payment. Take them into, t teach them by showing them how to build a business, share this message and these great products for health, help five million children at the same time, and have them at the end of the day be able to put food on their table, a roof over their head, pay for their cars, pay for their credit cards. If you will lead people into a place where they have, Plato said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. You, don't, you think you're the only one going through stuff. Everybody thinks they're, no, if only people knew what I was going through. If everybody, the person sitting next to you is thinking the same thing. And guess what? I'm thinking the same thing. We all go through stuff. I heard Andy say one time, it was, it was, it, we were speaking somewhere together, and he said, you know, the reality is you're, 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 you just came out of stuff or you're going into stuff. <laughs> but there's always stuff. There's always stuff. But if you can lead your army, if you can lead your team, if you can make forays in fertile country in order to supply your army with food, you're safe. You're safe. Listen. We love to be around each other. We love to be around this. And if what you want out of this is better health, and that's all you want out of this, this is a wonderful place to be. If what you want is the camaraderie of like-minded people, this is a wonderful place to be. If what you want is to know that the mission of, of impacting five million children around the world is what you want, this is a wonderful place to be. And if what you want is to pay your bills, take your kids on vacation, Make your dreams come true. This is a wonderful place to be. And in order to, to make that work, you must lead people in that direction. Sun Tzu wrote, carefully study the well-being of your men and do not overtax them. Concentrate your energy and hoard your strength. Very strategic. And the easiest way to do this is to, to sit down with your mentor and draw out your team and say, what do I do? How do I become more effective? How do I not waste it? my energy and the energy of the people that trust in me? This is not about throwing stuff against the wall. You're not throwing mud against the wall. That's way too inefficient and way too much work. What you're doing is everything is on purpose. You're doing enough of the right things. The mistake people make is they do enough of the wrong things or they don't do enough of the right things. If you would understand and you do after this weekend that it's doing enough of the right things, you'll concentrate your energy and hoard your strength. So the moments that you need that energy and that boost, you find it. You find it. Sun Tzu wrote, keep your army continually on the move and devise unfathomable plans. 15 times a month, 15 times a month, 15 times a month, Saturday training calls, Monday night broadcasts, home meetings, one-on-ones. Move at your pace, but move. Continuously move. Why do we say share the mission 15 times a month? Well, if, if it's, it's a rhythm you establish. It's this rhythm that you've established. If we shared it two times a month and, and it doesn't go well, you've got a pretty miserable month happening. But if you've got two times and then two more and two more, you're not thinking about what happened back here. You don't have time to think about what happened back here because you're not looking back there because you're looking ahead. And I promise you, your, your success, your future is not behind you. It's so clearly in front of you. It's so clearly in front of you and it's calling your name. It's as simple as it's not a, it's not a fog. It's an open sunlit horizon that says, I'm right here, just keep coming. Just keep coming and don't stop. Sun Tzu wrote, throw your soldiers into position whence there is not escape, and they will prefer death to flight. If they will face death, there's nothing they may not achieve. If there's no place of refuge, they will stand firm.
passionate people. Passionate people. What, was, what, what did Andy say? What was it he said when he said, he said, persist without exception. Sun Tzu wrote about it 2,500 years ago. Persist without exception. Didn't use those words, but he used the same message. It's, I'm not going to stop. Why stop now? I've already started the journey. And here's what most people, most people need to realize. You're so close to success. You're so, it's, 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 it's right in front of you. The challenge and the mistake that a lot of people make is, is, is they stop, they stop, and it was the next step. I had a friend of mine who was scared. He had fear talking, just talking to people in general. Even if there was a message, hey, can you help me? It provided a little fear for him. And his daughter would write him notes telling him how proud she was of him. She was nine years old. And the only reason he did what he did, building a team that he built, was for his daughter. Because she kept writing him notes saying, I'm proud of you. Because I'm convinced you can't say it enough. Because I'm convinced we don't hear it enough. And I think it's something we need to hear over and over again. I went into their house one day and I saw one of the notes she wrote. And, and, and it said this, Dad, one day you will stand on a stage and the rest of the world will know how great you are. The rest of the world will know what we already know, that you are somebody. I don't want to leave. I really don't want to leave. Y'all, you know, you look at people's faces. And I'm so proud to be with you. We're going to impact five million children. Amen. This is something we're going to do. And if you doubt yourself sometimes, let it go. <laughs> Just let it go. I admire you. I love you guys. And I guess what I would ask you to do this weekend is just think. And if you have to correct some of the thinking, do it. But just think. Think of what your life is going to be like. Think of the people that you're going to impact. Think of the people that you're leading now. Think of the people that trust you now. Think of the people that have confidence in you now. And know that now is the moment to wrap your arms around this mission, and now is the moment to finish what we've started. And as we leave here this weekend, we have one task, one task, to walk out of here and go do something great with our lives. God bless you guys. Thank you.